For platoon leaders, to earn your commission, you have undergone extensive training and are better trained and more prepared to be a PL than you know. In addition to basic combat skills, you have been trained and tested to lead leaders, manage organizations, and integrate combined arms to defeat the enemy. This handbook will educate you on how to build on your training and work with NCOs. Never forget you're responsible for soldiers' lives, the most precious resource in the Army, and must make tough decisions. Also, never forget you have an NCO support chain. In this video, I'm going to review the first 100 days of platoon leadership. Uh, this is published by the Army and was given to us during Signal Bullock. I've broken down the book into 30 leadership lessons. Here is the link. So if you want to access to this, I'll drop a copy of the link into the description along with the PDF slides that I created. The first 100 days. During my first 100 days, a variation of competencies and junior leaders and difficulty in un understanding my commander's priorities and guidance surprised me. People really need to be prepared to take control of an organization on day one and soak everything in. Clarify expectations. As a PO, your expectations come from both your company and battalion commanders. They may come in the form of formal counseling or informal direction. You receive guidance from higher leaders and translate this guidance to your platoon. Spend the time on clarifying expectations. Provide back briefs and understand how your platoon fits into the company and battalion's bigger picture as you assume command of your platoon. Confidence. Sir, you know how to plan. It doesn't matter what your orders are. We are here to execute. Most importantly though, you have to give those orders confidently. PSG to a new PL. Three, don't waver. Always listen to your NCOs. However, in the end, you will be the one who makes the overall decision. Be confident in your final choice. If you constantly go back and forth on standards or during decision points, your soldiers will lose trust in you and your ability to lead. Four, team building. In my experience, shared hardship is the most effective way to obtain team cohesion. Once a group conquers a shared hardship through teamwork, its members develop mutual trust and confidence in one another. Five, building trust. I've always been a gym rat as a soldier. Once I became a PSG, I was a bit overwhelmed. So I changed my schedule to hit the gym before company physical training. Looking back, this was one of the best actions I took. My squad and team leaders started joining me for my pre-physical training sessions. During this time, just as a platoon, my junior leaders could relax and get to know each other in ways you just can't during the duty day. When the brigade went to JRTC, I knew I could trust each of my team and squad leaders to get the mission done. Former PSG. Take charge. After arriving at my first station, I was driven out of the field. I had never met my soldiers. The first day, one of my soldiers lost his N NVGs. My PSG was young and I had to step up. I inspected the platoon's tie downs and set out a plan to search for the NVGs. I then reported to the commander what happened. Eventually, we located the NVGs and I had the soldier retie the entire platoon's tie downs. Afterwards, the platoon knew I was in charge and expected nothing but the best from them. My commander knew he could trust me to keep him informed and take responsibility. Company commander. Seven, set the standard. When I was in Kuwait, my battalion was on recall, but we often had a lot of downtime. When we were off, I tended to, make, to take my soldiers to the gym or focus on planning our next training event. There were some PLs who spent a lot of time playing video games in their bunks. Soldiers would see them playing during their downtime, and when we were training, you could see those PLs struggle leading the platoon. I learned that soldiers are always watching leaders, and you need to always maintain a high personal standard. 
eight, back each other up. As a new PL, I took charge of my platoon during a deployment. A couple days in on patrol, I received a change of mission from the battalion, moving us, moving us to a hotter area where we had taken contact the week prior. When I gave my warning over the radio, one of my team leaders came back questioning my order over the platoon net. At first, I wasn't sure what to do. My PSG came on the net and backed me up, telling the team leader to back down and listen for the rest of the warno. After that, I knew my PSG would always back me up, and he built confidence in me, built confidence in me as a leader. Former PL. Nine, know your soldiers. When new soldiers arrived at the platoon, I would always counsel them. I wanted to know as much about them as possible to build a relationship where they live, personal life, and their hobbies. One afternoon before NTC, one of my soldiers gave me a call. His wife was leaving with the kids. It took me seconds to determine he was thinking about hurting himself. My, my PSG and I linked up and headed to his house and spent all night with him. If I was not as engaged with my soldier, if we didn't build trust, and if I, didn't, if I did not take the time to answer that call, I believe the worst was possible. 10, build a relationship. My first PSG, a combat veteran, told me that I needed to counsel him. As a second lieutenant, how could I counsel him? So I asked him what questions he had for me. He said he only had one, that I want to work, that I want him to work for me or with me. I asked him what it meant to work for me. He said he would follow my orders and accomplish any mission given to him to the best of his ability to make our platoon combat ready. I then asked him what it means to work with me. He said the same thing, but added, and do nothing, and sorry, and do anything else he thought necessary based on his experience. Of course, I thought that sounded better. Obviously, he was asking for me to empower him and to learn from him without directly stating that. Former Special Forces Commander. 11, willingness to listen. When planning our first small arms range as OIC slash NCOIC, my PL and I went over the plan multiple times. I recommended we work a chow water plant into the range, making time for chow and having a water buffalo on site. My PL, just at our ranger school, wanted the platoon to eat on the move and carry water. Despite me telling him the commander would not go for it, he briefed his plan during the training meeting. The commander came down on him quickly. Luckily, I was able to support my PL, telling the commander we would rotate soldiers off the line for chow and that I had planned to take water cans with us. After our first range, we started working better together, but it was, a dif but it was difficult to overcome his lack of trust in me. Military PSG. Military police PSG. 12, clear orders. When I took over SPL, my battalion was on red cycle and we had soldiers supporting multiple taskings from the platoon. It was hard to get all the squad leaders together daily for meetings. I decided to start sending out updates and tasking by text so we could all share information in real time. This worked for a couple of days until I sent out, I need two vehicles dispatched to support a company preparing a defense. My squad leaders dispatched two IHMEEs. These are great for digging individual fighting positions, but the company wanted vehicles fighting positions. After getting chewed out, I started a 1600 meeting with all squad leaders and team members. At times, not everyone was there but the time spent face-to-face -face with my NCOs really helped us communicate better. 13, trust but verify. I remember one of my first high profile rangers. We were executing a mine clearing line charge breach that required special platoon equipment. In the rush to get out to the range, I overlooked pre-combat inspections, trusting my squad leaders to handle equipment. Once out on the range, I quickly realized the platoon didn't have what it 
what we needed and wasn't prepared for the mission. Luckily, this was training, but I learned that APL needs to be involved during PCIs for key equipment. Mutual trust. PL, PSG relationships are essential, yet complicated. On one hand, you have you have to immediately lead and establish a professional relationship. On the other hand, it is your job to learn about your soldiers' lives, especially the senior NCOs. Build trust with them and their, and their respect will come later through the decisions you make on a daily basis and in the field. The goal, this, the goal is to establish a mutual trust that is present in garrison, the field, and in a combat zone. Fifteen, clear expectations. Get to know and understand your soldiers. You have to be a leader who can have a positive impact with your soldiers. Take the time when you are conducting their initial counseling. Explain to the soldiers what you expect from them and what they will expect from you. Counseling. Set a date and time that is good for both you for the both of you, either your office or over a meal. Make the counseling a conversation rather than, a, that, than you reading topics to him. Don't make the mistake of having other NCOs or soldiers present for counseling between the PL and PSG. It is fine to have notes or a DA form 4856, but try to make the conversation, conversation personal and record the topic's plan of action later. Use this time to get to know your PSG his experiences, and work out your team vision for the platoon. Time and task management. I have seen platoon leaders who operate in chaos. They are everywhere at once, try to do it all themselves, provide no clear guidance, and do not know their own end state. These guys cannot get their eyes off the 50 meter targets and never get to the important stuff. Training calendar. One way a company manages time is through the company training calendar. Once a calendar is signed by the battalion commander and posted, it is used to identify when platoons are supporting, their, supporting and executing company and higher events and when they, are, they have time to execute platoon interval duties and training. Platoons that plan to support their company's training calendar have an easier time prioritizing their task, ensuring that soldiers understand the training calendar and what they will be doing keeps morale high by providing predictability. Mission command. Leadership time is high strung, but you need to be patient with yourself and with your subordinates. Make sure that any direction guidance you provide is clear and unambiguous. And if the result is not what you had hoped for, write it off as an honest mistake. There's no reason to lose patience or become irrational. People respect confidence and patience because it makes you a rational, logical thinker. Illicit buy-in. The platoon would have benefited if the platoon sergeant and myself had built a standard for what products were needed for the training schedule. Squad leaders and team leaders should be involved in building those training schedules products. This would have elicited their buy-in. Since they were included in the planning effort and they would have training products to reference, including what information their products needed in order to meet the standard. Tracking calendar. Excuse me, training calendar. And here's an example of the training calendar and what it looked like. And I took this directly off the book. 21. White space and back brief. As a PL, it is your job to decide what to train and plan training. You are also the point of contact between your platoon and company leadership through training, meeting, training meetings. As you identify white space on, on the calendar and decide with your PSG and squad leaders what needs to be done at the platoon level, be sure to give your commander a back brief. What to train on is always a conversation between PLs and commanders. Maintaining an open and constant line of communication is key for PLs. 22, training opportunity. 
Opportunity training is key. Following the program of instruction is good, but providing more training outside of the prescribed calendar pays huge dividends. 23, maintenance. The biggest thing I expect from a platoon leader and sergeant is knowing the status of all their equipment. A spreadsheet that lists every vehicle and any trailer, radio, or duke associated with it works well. When something goes down, they should be able to say why it was down and what the expected outcome will be, replace or repair, and when the part will come in. The platoon leader's first inventory. Platoon leader's first inventory is one of the first opportunities for a PL and PSG to work together. As you work through the plan and execute inventory, discuss standards and decide on the expectations of each other. Ensure you have the needed documents. Equipment is laid out by the TM. Subhead receipt holders are available to sign for the equipment and platoon equipment is properly marked. Discipline. Being a leader of troops is a privilege and leaders must take full advantage of the opportunity. Leaders must always maintain good order themselves. So that they may lead by example, the soldiers they are in charge of. Leaders must also be consistent on all army standards throughout their formation. Maintaining good order and discipline and being fair and impartial in recommending both rewards and punishment for their soldiers builds trust and maintains morale in a platoon. Twenty-five. Sit reps. PL should be kept apprised of everything that is going on with their platoon. Granted, they can let the NCOs handle the smaller discipline issues, but the PL still needs to know there are discipline issues and what those issues are. TLPs. Being a PL is not like in the movies. No one hangs off your every word and you cannot do it all yourself. Your PSG is right 90% of the time and you need to use your whole team to plan, rehearse, and execute if you want to be successful. 27, rules arranging. One, don't forget nothing. Two, have your musket clean as a whistle and be ready to march at a minute's warning. Three, when we camp, half the party stays awake while the other half sleeps. Four, don't ever march home the same way. Take a different route so you don't be ambushed. Five, don't. Never take a chance you don't have to. Six, don't sleep beyond dawn. Dawn is when the French and Indians attack. Seven, if somebody's trailing you, make a circle, come back onto your own tracks, and ambush the folks that aim to ambush you. This is from the 28 Rules of Ranging by Major Robert Rangers. Twenty-eight, troop to line. While conducting offensive operations, rotational units have difficulty with maintaining proper security during patrol-based activities, short halts, and at rally points. After the first 24 hours, units become tired. The security posture can drop significantly. Over the course, many units struggle to enforce security and the priorities of work. Soldiers will execute rucksack flops, pull security from their backs, fail to find cover, and fail to maintain their weapons at all times. Soldiers cannot be allowed to let their discomfort supersede the main principle of patrolling. Units fail to enforce the standards over a long period of time. The drop in security can start with the failure of individual soldier discipline once soldiers become tired, hot, and hungry. Security continues to fail because leaders, especially team leaders, do not troop the line to make soldiers pull security properly. Observer controller at JRTC. Integrating enablers. I can tell you if a platoon will be successful or not during the first hour. Those PLs and PSGs won't engage us, listen to our advice, and make us part of their platoon fail. Those that let us brief during the order, integrate us into their movement and planning, 
are able to get us where we need to be, when we need to be, to open a lane through the obstacle and get the platoon onto the objective. 30 Alpha, after action reviews. I have a, my platoon do an AAR after each training event. Leaders need to focus on what they control within their scope to improve their organization. We should not focus on what we cannot control. 30 Bravo, the AAR script. One, what was supposed to happen or what was the plan? Two, what actually happened? Three, why did this happen? Four, what did we learn from this? Five, what should we change for future operations? Six, what training do we need to conduct to improve? I say again, what training do we need to conduct to improve? And that brings us to the end of the book review. If you liked it, please give a like or follow me. Thank you.